Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Very excited to have Annette on the channel today. She is traveling full time in this school bus as a photo studio nonprofit all around the country. And today she's gonna to tell us a little bit about what she's doing and give us a full tour of the bus. Hello and welcome to New Jersey Outdoor Adventures. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Hi, I'm Annette McNamara. I am the founder and photographer of the nonprofit beautifulstrength.org. Our mission statement is celebrating the resilience of the human spirit through the power of conversation and photography. And our vision is that everybody has a chance to feel seen, heard, valued, and loved. I converted this school bus in 2019 to 2020. Actually, let's be honest, none of the conversion is ever ending so it's still going on but I've lived in it since April of 2021 and I am currently pursuing going to every state I'm on state 44 in New Jersey and I'll have about the last four lower 48 to finish in the next two weeks and then I'll start all over again so come on inside let me give you a little brief tour watch your step <laughs> all right well welcome into my house I'm gonna give you a little brief tour and then we'll kind of go more into detail. But this is the bathroom, the kitchen. Go right on into the makeup room. And I kept the wheelchair lift because I wanted to make sure everybody could get in. I also, I couldn't afford a studio and a house in Nashville, Tennessee, which is where I'm originally from. So I set up the bus to be basically both of those things all into one. So you have like hair and makeup over here, but then you also have sitting area, which can convert into a bed into a full-on workspace complete with toolboxes and all that right into a studio that also has a surprise that i'll show you at the end of this video okay so are we still going all right we're still going come on back up here so i had absolutely no idea what i was doing when i started this conversion i just knew that i really wanted to travel and i really wanted to do something really good to the with the world not to the world to the world with the world, whatever, in the world. That's what I was looking for. So when I started this, I had, actually when I went to look at the bus, I had like $500. I didn't even have the money to buy the bus. And the guy who was selling it loved what I was doing so much that he was like, you know what? I'll hold the bus for you if you can just come back and pay cash in two months. And I was like, all right. So a month later, I had shot weddings. I had shot two weddings and maybe like a couple senior photos. And I went back and I handed him $7,200 cash. And then I had no idea what I was gonna do as far as building. Like I'm a pretty intelligent person, but I didn't know like what the first thing of taking seats out or Rust-Oleum was or Coracil or any of that stuff. So luckily I had a lot of friends um, that helped me. Uh, the pandemic also happened. My bus is a um, COVID creation, I guess would be what it was called. And it was like the perfect timing of a lot of different things as to how my bus is the way it is. And I am super lucky and very grateful for everybody that has ever helped me with this. So first up, I had, I wanted to make sure that I had a full kitchen because I was gonna be living in it full time. Um, there are definitely things that I have changed in the bus. When I first moved in here in 2021, I didn't have solar, I didn't have uh, refrigeration all the time, so I ate a lot of ravioli <laughs> and gained a lot of weight. But um, now I have a refrigerator, which is kind of nice. But I had, I started off with the small fridge, and then now it's just storage. It actually isn't plugged in at all because it uses all of my solar. And I added um, another fridge, a full-size fridge, uh, just a month ago. So this used to be a pop-up table. I thought I would use it a lot to sit down and work. And I'm never level, so that made absolutely no sense for me to keep it. And then since I do, I use my bus for everything. So there's people in and out of here every day. Most nomads don't want that. They want like to go out in the middle of nowhere and not talk to anybody or just have vacation. My bus, I was just in downtown Manhattan yesterday. So my bus travels all over. It goes to cities, it goes to um, small towns. I have done photos in national parks at the top of mountains. Um, I've been everywhere. So I wanted to make sure that the bus was solid, that it was ready to pop up right away too. So my bus is ready to move all the time. So like everything has like these child lock proof. Um, it takes a magnet. This is also gonna be a surprise because something might fall out on us. Nope, 
but everything like kind of readjusts every once in a while. And sometimes I get knocked on the head, so that's really fun. Uh, people love this little spice rack thing you got going here. You glue that, um, glue it, and then there's a little screw up inside there so they don't wiggle. Like basically, you have to know in a bus, your bus goes through an uh, earthquake multiple times a day. So everything you see is industrial um, Velcro or like an industrial tape that's stuck or it's like screwed to something. So even like the Berkey, um, there's definitely some really cool things in the bus too. Like this Berkey uh, is a water filter. You could put lake water in there and drink it. I have not done that, but I have put some water out of some pretty nasty gas stations in there. Um, and everything that comes through my, I have a 65 gallon water tank underneath and everything that comes through here, I definitely put through here before I drink it. So full sink, um, I have propane. Uh, behind here is my water pump and my actuator. And then my water heater is behind this little refrigerator too. And I learned um, that you can't have them in cold weather because they blow up. Not blow up, that's the wrong word, but they burst. Uh, so yeah, that's really fun. Then there's also like a little, pantry so every all of this was custom made um i drew it all out on a piece of paper like i drew the bus out before i even had a bus which is pretty crazy but and then other people helped me bring it to life with through stick figure drawings which was pretty awesome so in this one i didn't have solar right away but i did have electric so i had 30 amp power the whole time so i could run i was basically using a generator to like charge everything up and then it would all like lose the battery or like not work at all. And so now I have um, all of my, here, well, let me get this out of the way. I have all of my DC charger, my 12 volt and AC. I'm, and don't um, follow me for like electrical advice or anything like that because <laughs> I might say something wrong and then people will correct me like, oh, it's amp hours, it's voltage, it's this, whatever, I might be wrong. But I do have a 250 amp hour battery. Um, and then Go Power was awesome because they sponsored solar for me. So uh, they saw a video where I was like charging up batteries and freezing ice packs and trying to keep my refrigeration alive. And they were like, oh my God, let us help you. So it's a 3000 um, uh, watt, 3000 watt inverter. And then I have a charge controller. I have 570 amp watts on the roof and then a 250 amp hour battery. Might have nailed that, I'm not sure. Uh, and then it also has storage on it. So I have all these drawers. My friend Dan built this part out. Um, he built this, oops, I didn't put it back in there. So I can have all, basically like this is like pantry and cooking mm -hmm. stuff. And then coming back to here, I also, so I do use, since I use everything for business, I also have like things that I sell, like t-shirts and stuff, but I'm going to pause for or just a second. I'm going to move these out of the way. Otherwise this is going to be a real pain in the butt to like keep opening these and showing them to you. So we'll just move our little shop. This thing, my friend Tony helped me build this. Um, we used an actual barn door. Like a lot of people uh, want sliding doors. That's kind of a popular thing right now. But a lot of the sliding doors, especially in something that moves, they bounce off. So you tend to have to take the door off and lay it down or you have to have it up there and like secure it somehow. Well, this, it can't bounce out of that because it's like literally in the track. So I have a really fancy bathroom. Not really. I actually didn't have a bathroom for the first probably, I had the frame of it, but I didn't have the bathroom for about the first six months that I was out. Um, I had a Lugaloo toilet and then I had a Planet Fitness. Planet Fitness is a great uh, membership. It's like $24 a month and you can use them anywhere across the U.S. Plus you can park there. So a lot of times I stealth park and uh, stealth. I'm in a 40 foot school bus, nothing stealthy. But it does have full shower. So I have the shower comes out of there. I did put on this little, um, I don't know what you call it. It's an on off button, but it's like a water killer. <laughs> That's not what it's called at all, but it's an easy way to save water so it's not like constantly running. I mean, without actually turning the faucet, you just put that tab and it turns the water on and off. And then I had, so my bathroom um, was like storage for a really long time and then I spray painted it so I ruined my shower pan. So I'm gonna convert this into 
like a New York style graffiti bathroom because I'm obsessed with bathrooms anyway. And then I think I have a friend who can turn it into a photo booth, but that's also kind of gross, but I'll make it, I'll make it nice. It's not like you're going to sit on my toilet or anything, but this is a cooler. So everybody's like, Oh, what are you doing now? Like, are you, where do you go to the bathroom? Well, I have a Lugaloo again, and I found that a composting toilet was really cool until it's not cool until you have to clean it and then i'm i don't i don't care what you I, whatever you can judge me not judge me i don't know it's gross to me and the company that i had airhead they were awesome their customer service was amazing their product was amazing there was just something to it about it to me with like cleaning it but also i urban travel a lot there's not a lot of places in cities where you can just go dump your pee like it's just like that's probably really gross and an overshare but it's honest living sorry okay so, these little peeing people, my dad retired um, right before I, when I was building this too. And out of all of the things, he had his business for like 30 years. And I'm like, can I please have those little peeing kids? So that's my indicator that it's the bathroom. So moving on to this space. So when I first started this, I knew I knew I wanted it as the photo studio and I knew I wanted it for the nonprofit, but I thought I might do like full photo shoots in here too. So I wanted to have a space where people could check their hair, have their makeup done. Um, this is a Rebel Poppy, I think is what it's called. Yes, oh, it's written right there. Rebel Poppy, it's from Amazon, it's like a hundred bucks. And we flipped it upside down and attached it and then we wired in some outlets up top. We use, I use these little things a lot. Oh, earring down, I'll get that later. Um, <laughs> but I use it like for earrings. Um, th there's some more in the back too for office supplies, but they're just super simple ways of storing things and you can see in them to see what the heck is inside of it. So this is a toolbox. I used a lot of toolboxes throughout my bus. Um, they're uh, screwed to the floor so they don't move at all. And then the cool thing about it too is you can like lock everything. So as you're driving, nothing opens up. Well, as long as the lock stays connected, but nothing opens up, it stays connected like that. But then it's also kind of an extra security. If I'm out somewhere too, I just kind of hide the keys and then nobody can really get into any of my stuff. So this is like total bathroom supplies and like different things like that. This side, so here we kind of start the business aspect of what I'm doing. So since I'm running a nonprofit, I do not charge for the photos that I take. All, everything is by donation only. Some people can pay, some people can't. Like I did not start this um, nonprofit to make a ton of money. I did it because I wanted to celebrate people. And, but at the same time, people were like, oh, I'd like to have a t-shirt or I'd like to have merch. So I came up with another way of just having, like we sold a bunch of these ducks. They're super cute. They're like, since um, every gallon of gas, well, I said they're $5. So some places that's more or less, but um, $5 a duck and then that's a gallon of gas. And I've sold probably like four of these things. You would be amazed at how much gas this thing takes. <laughs> probably not, it's a diesel bus. Um, so this, this is the lift. So with the nonprofits, the photos, um, I wanted to make sure that everybody was included. So. I didn't want to have to tell somebody no, like if they were in a wheelchair or if they weren't able to climb steps. So a friend of mine at the beginning of the pandemic, well, like the first two weeks of shutdown, he was like, Annette, what is the one thing that you would really like to have in your bus? And I was like, man, I really would like to have that open back so I can have the studio back there. But the lift was back there, but the lift was really important. So we were like drawing out all these different ways of like, we're doing a ramp and like all these different things. And he's like, why don't we just cut it out and move it? And to me, I'm like, uh, that seems impossible. And he's like, oh, it's just sheet metal. It's like pudding. Guaranteed he did not think that it was like pudding after we did it because it was four days of not necessarily fun, but it was completely, I mean, it's obviously it's moved, but it went from the back to the center. Um, so it's fully capable of lifting people up in wheelchairs. We've tested it with like, I think it was like 1500 pounds like it is it's really durable and then this is a mini split so the condenser is underneath I wanted the bus to kind of look like it wasn't a lived-in bus like sometimes schoolies you can tell like oh that's a family's bus they got an air conditioner hanging off the back and they have bike well now I have a bike on the front but I liked being able to look at my bus and not really tell if it was a house or not so everything's kind of tucked up underneath the bus and you don't see it um, 
this thing, this is a 9,000 BTU. I would definitely, so I'm 36 feet. I say 40 because I have stuff on either side, but it's definitely, I would have, I should have got the bigger one, the one that's 13,000. Um, and then mine, since it's on the side, it's harder for airflow to come in and then change before hitting like windows. So that's why I use a lot of fans to just keep the airflow in here. Um, but if this was on like an end to end, which I couldn't do it in the back because the studio is back there and I, in the front, I kept the front as a garage. So that has like oil and coolant and stuff in it. Um, I did also, when I first got the bus, um, we pulled the ceiling down and pulled out like all the insulation and everything and I spray foamed it. That was painful. <laughs> if you've never spray foamed anything, uh, it burns like you're you look like a full-on hazmat person you have like this big old mask on and like everything's around you but if one little morsel of that even touches your eyeball it stings so badly but as far as a benefit to insulating your vehicle um it does do really well i know a lot of people that leave the ceilings in and i know there's a lot of controversy over like is a bus fully converted if it still has the bus ceiling or if it still has the original floor and i'm like who cares? Like, I mean, if you like it and it works for you and it's functional, I mean, it, whatever. Um, I did that. I did it because it was what was recommended to me and I was following like advice from a lot of other people. It seems to work really well. It's still hot as heck in my bus and it's still super cold, but I also kept every window. So a lot of that is like, did I, did I do something that was beneficial? I hope so. It cost me like 1600 bucks. So I'm not really sure, but this is also an unfinished little corner of the bus because I was supposed to move this and I just haven't done it. Um, but it's also nice too, cause it gives you a little, so you can see everything. Um, so this bench, I turned a locker, basically being, you have to be really thrifty as to where you put stuff, how you put stuff and like use of space so I turned it was like a $20 locker I got on um, uh, Facebook marketplace turned that into a bench and then these and this is stuff from like Michaels you can get the foam and then just material that you wrap around uh, around it I would pull this out but I honestly have never used it and I don't remember how the heck it works but it's a full bed that comes out uh, I wonder if you can even see it Anyway, this whole thing folds out and then you can put a full size air mattress on it and then it has clothes. So this is like all like clothes, t-shirts, tank tops, all that type of stuff. I've been accumulating tank tops and t-shirts on the road that I absolutely don't need. And then this I customized. So when I drew this out, I wanted to have something that I could put backdrops in. So it's long enough to put full backdrops in which I thought was pretty cool, even though I don't really use them that often. Okay. Mm, I don't think there's anything extra cool about this. Everything, once again, is Velcroed down, so none of this falls off. I absolutely love this light. That's not turning on. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Um, these, so I have these all throughout the ceiling. They're little O-ring hooks that go all the way to the roof. Uh, there's... Three, I can hang three hammocks up and down, up and down here, as well as to here. So, and then I can also, if you're into working out, you can also like, if you have a TRX, ooh, can I say TRX? Is that trademarked? I don't even know. If you hang that on there, you do a <laughs> workout. When you're not even at all, this like old me where I was like a CrossFitter would have really liked this. New me is like, that's probably gonna be painful and that's gonna hurt, but someday I'll get back into doing that maybe. And then it just stores right here. So this part originally was gonna be a sit down desk and this was a stand up desk. And um, I no longer, when I built it, I was like, I'm never gonna sit there. So mainly I just sit on my um, bench to do work or I pull up like a little folding table. And then this is a full stand-up um, desk too. So like when, I, even if you look back at like old videos of when I was just dreaming in here, I'd be like, how cool would it be if I was like here and I was like ready to take your picture and then I turned and I took your picture and then it popped up on this uh, monitor and you were able to see it. And like to have this be the reality of what is actually happening in here is pretty freaking cool. So 
And then even everything in here is customized because once again, I was gonna use it for business. So even like this drawer, or drawer, it's not a drawer, it's a shelf, is made for like binders. So we even had to measure like how big this would be knowing that that's what it would be used for. And then like this, I wanted a closet. Um, I'm a girl, so every once in a while I like to wear dresses, but um, I've actually not worn a dress on the road pretty much at all. But I wanted to have space that I could hang stuff. And then I have just, once again, accumulated more things. So I could probably get rid of a lot of stuff. This is also how I kind of, like all my family will send me pictures and stuff and to keep a clean looking bus, but to still have all the memories. All of my doors, the inside of the doors are pretty much lined with like photos of my family and stuff. So now we can get to the cool, the coolest part of my bus is actually the photo studio. Um, as I've traveled, so once again, it's the nonprofit, it's beautifulstrength.org. And the whole reason why I'm traveling is so I can take pictures of people all across the United States. So what they do is they sit here against the black wall, I take the picture, and then they write in their own handwriting around their photo however they would feel seen, heard, valued, and loved. So it's all about celebrating resilience, um, just celebrating people. Like people are so awesome. And I just wanted to do something that was like, giving back or storytelling or connecting. I don't know, it was something I think I needed as much as anybody else. But everybody sits in this one, um, I pull out a little chair, sits right here, and then I back up to back, uh, back a little further, take the picture, and everybody is in the same exact location. So I've done over 1,500 of these in this same spot. And then after I take the picture, I send it to an iPad, and then that's where they write on it. So the other cool thing about this space is that it also converts into my bedroom. So when I was um, dreaming of a space too, I wanted to have something that would be open from the front to the back because I wanted it to be very engaging, like if there's multiple people in here. So if you were coming in and you were sitting and you were waiting for somebody to take a picture, you can still interact with them and it wouldn't be like a cut off space. And then if I wanted to like go to bed, obviously not when people are in here, it's going to make a squeaking sound, but um, it's like a magic trick. So this folds down and then sits on that black cube right in the middle. And when we built it, it immediately changes the sound in here. Like the sound gets absorbed by the mattress. Um, but when we built, when you, I had my friend Dan, I, once again, I drew this out um, with stick figures. And I was like, I want to be up high enough that I can see out the windows. So if I'm out somewhere like on BLM land or like at a beach or something like that, if I'm laying in bed, I can wake up to this like epic sunrise. And then the back of the bus is painted by my friend Jocelyn. She's a breast cancer survivor in Nashville. And she does these like humongous murals. And she was like, I would love to paint something on your bus. And I'm like, why don't you paint the back wall? Like make it kind of like you're in some fiery sunset-y thing. So it's like kind of cool because the whole bus is black and white and then the huge transition of just like bright bubbly colors back there. And then, so because of the bed, I had to change, I had to really think about how I was gonna do my curtains. And originally, like I still need to paint, go back and paint this. I had um, curtain rods and then I would pull the curtain rod forward pull the bed up, push the curtain rod back out. And it was just a pain. Like, I'm like, yeah, when I first moved in here, I didn't have any curtains, which was really fun at truck stops where you're like, oh cool, I can't sleep. It's bright and everything else. And I'd be putting blankets up. And so this was a thing. Um, I don't know what they're pulleys, I think is what it's called, but it's just like a wire and a pulley system. And then the end over here, you can see how they're tightened. So as, especially being in the bus, they're probably about to be tightened again because they loosen up a lot. But then that way, I just flipped curtains sideways, put little hooks on them, and now it's just a simple, when I'm ready to go to bed or if I need to take a shower or whatever, I just pull them on over and pull them all back. And then when I wake up in the morning, it's I, it makes me make my bed every day, but I use bungee cords to hold everything on because the first time that I uh, didn't do that, <laughs> everything went flying back. I've also lost a computer on the bed. Like, I mean, oh gosh, it's, there's been, yeah. You bungee cords with everything on them is great. So another thing that I love about the bed and why we designed it this way is I wanted to be able to see all the way to the back. 
So when I'm traveling in traffic, like in New York City or even Jersey, Jersey was a little bit scary, I gotta say. I can actually be all the way in the driver's seat and look to the back and know when I'm passing people. So now I do actually use my mirrors a lot more. Um, I'm actually a fairly good driver now, but from here I can look into the mirror and see all the way to the back. And then every once in a while, I accidentally leave the studio up when I take off and I'm like, well, guess this is just how I'm driving today. But, and then you can also easily see out this window. I kept all the actual mirrors. I actually broke off one of these mirrors. One of the scariest stories, I was driving on the 405 in LA and a truck came up right next to me. I swear his mirror almost hit my elbow and he took my mirrors and like whipped them around to the front and then I couldn't see, so that was really fun. But yeah, okay, so you wanna see some of the fun things on the outside? Yay! <laughs> All right, um, so one of the things that I did install is a ring doorbell. Uh, now I can see, as long as there's Wi-Fi and I have power on the bus, I can see the front of my bus from anywhere. And it also like makes me just feel safer uh, because I can, I can see anything that's happening and it has a motion sensor on it. So it can let me know if somebody's approaching the bus. Um, this, I also have, this was one of the things that it actually came off the toolbox on the inside and I put it on the outside thinking that I was going to use it as like a towel rack or when I was at events, I would hang like t-shirts and stuff on it. I don't use this nearly as much, but if you want to like dance or do plies, whatever, you can come up and dance on my bus. Um, this is an outdoor shower. So wasn't sure if I was gonna have a shower at first on the inside, put one on the outside. I've actually only probably showered outside for like two times. These little, um, I don't even know what they're called. These little circular things. <laughs> they're actually, they go to a shower frame that I can drop a curtain on. So if I do want it on the outside, I can use it too, but I just don't do it as much. I put um, four of these little D-rings around the bus too. So if I'm somewhere where there's um, hammocks, I can put a, tr a hammock to a tree. And then well, the cool thing about buses too, so if you're doing a bus, put these on the outside because when you travel with other buses, you can sit in between each other and have like extra outdoor seating. Okay, and then this, um, this is just it, just to show you what I did with moving it. That's the back side of the lift. So a lot of people remove these because they want to, um, they have like a, a big open view, which is obviously awesome. So even sometimes when I'm at the beach or something, I'll just bring this down just so I can have a big open view. This is the diesel to my diesel heater, which is like, you can barely see it, but it's right in there. Um, the diesel heater, some of the things that you should know about a diesel heater, I know some people are like really gung-ho for them, some people hate them. Uh, the thing works super well. It's called a Chinese diesel heater. It's off of Amazon. It's like $189. It's not very expensive. Uh, I've gone through two. The first time when I went to turn it on, nobody tells you that it sounds like it's a jet engine about to launch inside your newly converted uh, bus that you just paid for. So it's the glow plug warming up and like getting going and then it calms down after it gets to its certain level and then you can turn it off. But if you freak out and you turn it off ahead of time, then um, it blows the glow plug and you have to buy another one. So <laughs> I'm on my second one. The other thing that people don't tell you about it is that you should run it every once in a while, even if it's hot during the summer because it gets carbon buildup. So I just did this the other day. I broke the little um, display monitor and I just replaced it. And I went to turn it on and all of a sudden I thought my bus was on fire. There was so much smoke on the inside. I came outside and it's just like billowing out of the bottom of my bus. And I was like in like a shock panic of um, like tears because I was like, I'm about to lose my bus. I'm about to lose my house. And so I like run in and grab the electrical or the electrical. I grabbed the fire extinguisher and come back out. And it was just that the carbon had to be burned off. It was fine, but run your diesel heater every once in a while. So then these, my dad helped me um, customize uh, boxes that go on the inside of the bus. So these were not on the bus when I bought them. He welded them and um, they actually are some of the nicest boxes that I've seen. So I'm able to keep like all my tools. We also flip the propane tank sideways. That runs all the way to the front. And then that way that's removable on the outside too. And then on this side, I originally thought that I was gonna be hauling a car, but to back up and go forward and everything else, like the cool thing about the bus, like even in New York City yesterday, I was able to do a three point turn 
because I can just back all the way up and I don't have to worry about it trailering or detaching or anything like that. So I also have storage on the back here. This ho is like all my electrical cables and like my um, water and stuff like that. Or not water, but the water hoses. And then added a lock to the diesel. So that was new. And then this thing, so the generator, uh, when I installed this, I uh, had a couple different people help me do this. My water is right here too, so there's a water fill up. And then this thing pulls out. Ooh, those just bugs. This pulls out, and then I'm able to run a cable from here to the front of my bus. I'm a 30 amp input. Uh, but I'm able to run like my air conditioner like today when I wanted to dry my hair I can do that off of this uh, generator too and then or if it's like a cloudy day and I need to charge up my um, solar I can run it too and then it just slides back in I would do it I want to run a cable so I can run this in place or do like an adapter where I can start it from the inside and turn it off from the inside I just haven't gotten to that just yet um, but when it was flipped around the other side, the other way it was setting off my CO2 monitor on the inside. So that's why it's backwards and it's facing out. And then um, if I'm somewhere for a really long time or if I'm doing podcasts or something in the bus, I can literally drop this and pull it completely off the bus and away from it. And then it just easily stores right back up. I will lock, everything on my bus has a lock on it. Um, just because I figure like less opportunity, the better. Uh, and then it's also like bungee corded in. I also can't do multiple things with my hands apparently. There we go. <laughs> and then this is just to bring it in a little bit more. So, and then these are the batteries. I have two startup batteries for the bus. I have backup cameras too. There's one on each side for the blind spots and then two for the back. But I drilled through those so <laughs> I haven't actually ever used the backup cameras. So they look nice, they're there. Uh, and then this is the 30 amp plug. Uh, I wish they made this, I should have bought this in black. They, it yellows, but whatever. But this is 30 amp um, power so I can plug into any campground or actually, and then I have a converter that can convert it into just regular 110 too. And then I just recently added a bike rack to the front. Um, it's not a super fantastic, but I am proud of myself because I actually drilled through it and had to fabricate it. I'm using big words um, to that, but. So that's basically kind of the whole bus as a whole. So let me tell you a little bit more about what I'm doing with this project, the Beautiful Strike Project. And a lot of it starts with what the bus is named. So when I was in high school, I read the book To Kill a Mockingbird and there's a line in there and I'm probably going to rip this apart, but you never really understand somebody until you crawl under their skin, until you walk around in their shoes for a while. Um, and uh, you just really can never get to know somebody until you have a conversation with them. So how we judge people just walking by from the outside isn't always what's going on on the inside. So that's kind of what the project is about and having it be in a school bus is really cool because a lot of times the pain and suffering or trauma or mental health or all those things that we go through, a lot of times they begin in our childhood years. So it's kind of cool to be able to come into a bus and have it kind of be like a therapy session. I used to call them photo therapy sessions, but they're not really photo therapy. I'm not a therapist, but they're very therapeutic. And then that way, when you come in, you're able to kind of be in a safe space that already says, hey, you're welcome here. And I'm willing to listen to your story. So I wanted to show you a little bit. Oh, shoot. Oh, hey. <laughs> I want to show you a little bit about what it is. This is the whole purpose of the bus and why I'm doing what I'm doing is all because of this organization. When I built the bus, I 100% had the dream of what this nonprofit would become. Um, so it started prior to having the bus. It, I wasn't mobile, it was just a backdrop and I would go around to all these different people and I would let them be who they are and express who they are to the world. And it started these like really cool conversations between people who maybe would never have those types of conversations, but it also allowed people to feel really good about themselves. Like I moved to Nashville so I could photograph rock stars and I do, I just do it on a daily basis. Like it's really, I want everybody to feel like a rock star and everybody to feel important. So I've done over um, 3000 of these uh, and it's from all walks of life, all different nationalities, sexualities, body sizes, belief systems, all different things. And without the bus, like I just, I don't know how it would have evolved 
but it's evolved into this super cool, um, it's just an amazing, amazing thing. I've been to veterans homes and nursing homes, um, beaches, I've been to foster care group homes, uh, festivals, I went to a Christian rock festival, I've been to a pagan festival, I've been, I mean, it's like, you name it, I've probably done it. Uh, we've had Spanish, um, so written in Spanish, Polish, German, but it's just, it's allowing people to just be who they are and be celebrated for who they are. And a lot of the cool things is it's in the moment. So it's not like a regular photo shoot where you have time to like get primped and proper and look your best or hide or say no. Well, I mean, you can say no, I'm not going to force you to take a picture, but like some of them, like these are just people who were just hiking in um, Acadia National Park. This is another bus lifer. Um, this is a homeless guy I broke down in Portland, Maine at a park that had about 20 homeless people who thought that I was bringing food to them. And this guy helped me with a hose, like he got underneath the bus and helped me fix a hose. Um, and then another guy came up, there's friends, like be, some of the people I've known for years, some people I just barely meet. Um, I've worked with like this, this woman, I found out two weeks prior to that, that her husband, um, her husband uh, murdered her son and then killed himself. And this was in 2013, I think it was. I can't remember exactly, but we had this moment and then I was like, okay, what was your son's favorite thing? And she was like, he loved going fishing in Cape Cod. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go to Cape Cod. I'm gonna take the bus and we're gonna go fishing. And then she was like, oh my gosh, can I come too? So we met in Cape Cod and we went fishing and, and as a tribute to her son. Um, I went to like a refugee uh, dream center in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, I mean, this is a pride festival. It's just, it, you name it, like this project works everywhere and it works with everyone. And I just, I don't think that it's anything that I ever want to stop doing. Cause even though I've only done 1500 photos, that seems like a lot, but really that's just like the tip of the iceberg. Like, and I just, I want to just keep going and going and going and going and going <laughs> every day. Um, I have no regrets. I definitely have days where I'm like tired. Finding parking for a 40 foot bus every day is, uh, is pretty exhausting. But, um, whenever I see somebody like little kids wave, like the bus is like this, it's its own little character and like kids will wave. They want, I need to get an air horn cause they'll honk at me like that old school honk. I love that. Um, but it's when I roll out of bed and I mean, my whole bus is in front of me and I'm just like, this is what I get to do. Like, this is what this moment in my life is and it's something that I dreamed of since being a kid and I'm getting to be a photographer I'm getting to travel I'm getting to do all those things and it's because people helped and people like one of the biggest things I can recommend is like to anybody in any community is to be helpful like there's no reason to be competitive or challenge or withhold information of how you did something um, I mean, it's great to share the wealth and knowledge and be there for other people. And when people reach out to me and ask questions, I try to direct them into the right person. Like I might not be the person who can tell you how to do it, but I might be able to connect you to the person who does. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm very grateful that I'm able to do what I'm doing and that people continue to support it. And that, um, you know, I also want to be respectful of how this lifestyle is, the nomadic lifestyle. And there's a lot of people now too. So, you know, whatever you take in, take out, whatever, you know, leave no trace or ask permission, be kind, like all those things. Like, um, I just, I don't know. You just, just be a good human. Right. So, but yeah, um, if you want to see more about what I'm doing, the project, and you want to follow like all the adventures of the bus, all the breakdowns and the rebuilds and the photos and everything else, I have Instagram. It's beautiful strength underscore bus. There's also Facebook with it, which is beautiful strength bus. If you don't care about any of the build, which would be weird as to why you're watching this channel, but, um, beautiful strength underscore org or beautiful strength dot org is also a really good reference to go to. So, um, please check it out. Please be part of the project. If I'm coming through your town, um, I have a, my biggest like fear is that I'm not going to get to everybody that I want to. And I have people reach out, but just know if you comment on this video or if you comment on any of the Instagram stuff, I see it. And I do like make a note as to where people are. And I'm trying to get better at being like, Hey, this is where I'm going to be right now. Or this is where I'm going to be. And I have no idea what 2023 is going to bring, but hopefully Alaska. That's my main, that's my number one goal in 2023 is Alaska. So follow along. <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming out today. 
This is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Thanks for joining. <laughs> Bye.